Hi, my name is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group and obviously YouTube channel because here you are. And um, today is video one in uh, my series, our series, uh, Vintage Christmas Day in July 2021. And this is a collaboration between myself, Kyung Shotwell, and Lisa Fisher. Um, let's talk just a second about the other two ladies, uh, Kyung Shotwell. Um, designed and did this whole giant kit that we're going to be using several people have done flip throughs so I'm not going to go ahead and do a flip through suffice it to say it's 56 pages long and um, you're gonna love it it's got all kinds of Christmas images and backgrounds and all kinds of things like that and she has a YouTube channel which the link will be below and Lisa Fisher um, not only has her own YouTube channel and does amazing mini journals, she um, also has a store which is called Lisa's Paper Lace and Bling. I'm sorry, that's her Facebook group is Lisa's Paper Lace and Bling and her store is Paper Lace and Bling. And um, she sent me before this whole box of goodies and we're gonna use some of them. Um, in our series here um, these look like just the right color for Christmas we've got some beautiful lace so those things are going to be um, coming from Lisa's shop and she even gave me a coupon to give to you guys if you put in the code 15 Terry and my name is T-E-R-I then um, you get 15% off until December 31st very Christ Merry Christmas okay 15% off $15 or more. Okay, so we got that. Now, what we're going to make is we are going to make a ring bound journal. Um, I racked my brain about what to make. I knew what other people were making, which was my mistake. Never find out what other people are making because then all of a sudden you can't think of anything to make. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a ring bound journal, Christmas journal and um, I'm not sure how many pages it's going to be. Um, I'd like to do six videos so however many pages we get done in that amount of time that's how big our ring bound journal is going to be. So for this project you're going to need craft paper. This is um, cardstock, craft cardstock. You're going to need papers from Kyung's kit obviously. I got some pretty papers here and when you you're going to need two or three of these rings you can get them in the office supply department at uh, anywhere Amazon um, then now a lot of people put eyelets in here when I did this one I couldn't really find a color that I liked um, this one I could use these darker ones I don't have enough so I would have to do that at a later date um, but these are something you can look at colors like this Let's see if you can see them okay or you could use these reinforcement labels and they come in these metallic colors they're by Avery our famous paper company and you use these in um, uh, notebook paper to reinforce around the holes so the hole doesn't uh, come out when you put it in a notebook. So these are some nice colors too. If you feel like you can put them on straight on every hole then those would be a good option for you as well. So we set these back in here. We're going to use some other stuff, some brads and you know some other things and um, so the way a ring bound journal works is that you cut holes in the sides of your book and then you put the rings through and then you can turn the pages. You can even take the pages out and put them in a different order. You can take pages out completely. You can add pages. Now these are two inch rings and I need to get some more of these. I've got some smaller ones so uh, we may use that for this video and then I'll replace them you know with something larger or I might take the ones out of here just to show you. Okay, this is our little overview video. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a page. Now this one is a little small for what I want. I wanted it to be just a little bit wider. This will be perfect to show you. This um, 
is a piece of craft paper and it's um, this one is I believe seven and a quarter by eight and then we measured one and a quarter inch in and folded it over and glued it that'll be the reinforcement for where we put our rings it's very important to remember where your reinforced side is because you don't want to put your picture here and then accidentally flip it over this way and put your picture on because then your picture will be backwards okay so you want to think about that and um, I'm going to go a little bit bigger and you want to know the main reason seven and a quarter on a paper trimmer is right in here somewhere note somewhere okay so I'm going to go seven and a half because the line is right there it just makes it a smidge bigger quarter of an inch and that will give us a little bit more room for these larger images um, throughout the kit this is going to be our cover image in case you haven't figured that out by now and um, I may put this on the next page in I've also got some papers set aside for possibly a pocket and um, you know we could do both I haven't really decided so I'm gonna probably put you on pause in between okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to cut a page seven and a half by eight and a half no by eight we could go eight and a half Half would give us a little more room wouldn't it because we're gonna have a border Let's see what this came out to once we cut it yeah this is eight and a quarter so if we go eight and a half that would be fine we can always trim it down can't add on so let's try let me write it down let's try eight and a half I have my measurements written down as you can see I don't have a whole lot of notes though <laughs> so let's try um, let's try seven and a half by eight and a half okay and then since we're gonna fold it over uh, one and a quarter then that'll give us a six and a quarter um, front and then we're going to go three quarters of a weight of an inch in so we've got room for our rings and um, so that's going to give us a six inch page she says with confidence that's this size so we'll see it's going to be just a smidge bigger so like I said we're going to go seven and a half wide Okay, oops, move that out of the way. Seven and a half wide by eight and a half tall. Yeah, this is going to give us a little bit bigger book. The images in this kit are larger, so um, we don't want too small of a book, or we're going to have to start reducing pages on the computer down and um, printing them out uh, smaller which is fine they're going to be just as pretty so I did do that for some of the ephemera and we'll get into that later I printed some of the ephemera at 50% because I'm making a smaller book and that's perfectly acceptable to do I'm sure Kyung would agree okay so let's move these out of the way all right, we're going to get our scoreboard out. We're going to score it at one and a quarter. And the reason we're scoring it in so far to fold it over is so that when we have our paper on the page, the paper covers the seam on the back. So if you make it in far enough and you put your papers on, then you're definitely going to cover that seam. Okay, so we're going to score it at one and a quarter. if I can get this out okay I'm gonna score it at one and a quarter okay. 
and I like the idea of Christmas halfway through the year. You can never have too much Christmas. A very festive time of year. So I'm doing this several times because this card stock is a little bit heavier. I'm going to kind of fold it just a little bit. I'm not going to just yank it around. And that will bring the chances of it cracking right here down. And then we're going to burnish it. And then we need to glue this down. And this easy process is what we're going to use to make each page. Okay. And my glue is across the room. Because I was going to fill it. Let me try this. This dries really fast, so I have a little bit of a difficult time using this. But this right here, it's not going to matter, I don't think. I don't use it that often, so. There we go. Maybe. Maybe not. It was a little hard to get the pin out. Of course, with this small of an opening, most of the time it's hard to get the pin back in, too. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Pin in, pin out. Now, let's see what we got. Here we go. We got some glue. We have glueage. Remember, you're going to be punching holes in the middle, so you may not want to slather it thick full of glue and then try to punch through it. We'll talk about the crocodile in a minute. Well, I got glue everywhere. Dry wet wipe. Clean. Just leave it out. Let it dry out. And it makes your book smell pretty. Okay. So now we've got our base page. And we're going to I like to draw a little bit of a line, especially on this craft paper. You can't really see the line very well. Seems kind of silly to say draw a line that you can't see. But anyway, it gives you an idea of where to put the edge of your paper because you're going to be, you know, you're going to be seeing this. So I'm going to be, of course, you're going to see it. I think you know what I mean. It's kind of early. I got a little bit of a late start on this. So I'm trying to make sure that I get enough videos ahead of time so that you guys can have uh, some videos to watch for everybody's Merry Christmas. Now, we have, so far, we still have a week for people to sign up, and uh, we already have 30 people. So what's going to happen is, let me tell you this real quick, you're going to look for the hashtag that's in the title of this video which is a uh, vintage Christmas day in July, 2021. If you do a search for that hashtag in YouTube and in Facebook, you will find all of the posts from everybody that is participating and everyone should have kind of links to each other. And, um, so you can get across that way. But I think that if you see 30 different versions of something you can do, with one Christmas kit. Now some people are just going to do photos. And there are card makers. Some will be doing flip throughs. Um, some people are going to um, make videos um, like flip throughs and whatever. And some people are going to do tutorial videos like what I do. Um, I could have made the book and done a flip through, but what fun would that have been? especially since I'm kind of a tutorial person. I think because I like to talk. <laughs> Don't quote me on that though. No talking from you guys. Nothing from the peanut gallery. Only stuff from me. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm the only one allowed to talk in my videos. So tell the kids to be quiet. Okay, so now we can see that we've got kind of an idea 
where we want our paper to go. Yep, that's straight. For a minute there it didn't look straight. Now see the other reason I'm not wild about art glitter glue is that it kind of wrinkles the paper. Let me see if I can reach. No, I can't. I'm gonna put you on pause for just one second and I'm gonna go get my glue. Okay, now I've got my glue. I filled it. Let me give you a tip. If you want to be able to take your lid on and off, I forgot to do it the first time and so this part got stuck shut. But if you want to be able to take this on and off or both, both or either, um, put Vaseline around the threads and it keeps the glue from sticking to the threads and then you'll be able to take it take it on and put it off. <laughs> put it on and take it off. I'm gonna put the stick this back in here. I think this would work well for cardboard. Because it sticks really well. It just to me it seems like um you know what I mean? Like it makes it a little wrinkly. Okay, so now what we're going to do is this is going to be my image for the front. Um, once I cut it, then I'm going to ink it. The color inks I'm going to use for this is a uh, fired brick, and that's because these are more burgundies than bright reds. And then I'm also going to do scattered straw because I really like it um, instead of. Um, possibly a, a vintage photo which is a little dark so we may end up doing that I, I don't mind mixing and matching colors and um, I have quite a few colors so okay a little bit of go juice all right so we're going to see this way we don't have to cut the height we only have to cut the width and where's our let's look at our line again draw it a little bit darker and this makes it easier to cut the um, paper as well I mean you could measure it I suppose but oh look at that it's right where this music line is. I have to remember to push this up so that I don't work off the screen. I apologize if I did, but all I did was draw a line where, to, where I wanted to cut it. And I showed my glue bottle, which I know, I know personally, is very exciting. Very, very exciting. Okay, so let's uh -oh. I'm going to see if I need a new blade. I might. I don't know if I have schmutz on there or if that's where the seal was when they emulsified it. Okay. Got it down here so I can see the line. Right now we're gonna we're definitely gonna use this. We're very it's very close to half. If I had a stripe, you know what I mean, or uh, maybe fussy cut. It's off the screen. Uh, fussy cut it out, or uh, put a stripe along the edge, like a Christmas stripe. That would be pretty. That would cover up any short falling, shortfall of the page. So let's ink this for the cover. I'm thinking that we might want to make it stand out a little bit. I can always print out another one if this ends up being too dark. Around the edges, it's already got the brown. It does already have the brown, doesn't it? Let's take a look and see. Well, that's festive. I'm going to make it stand out against the brown. It'll give it a little bit of dimension too. However, when you're doing something like this, you have to be careful not to 
you know, schmutz it way over onto the page. It's difficult for me. I kind of get a carried away. I kind of get a carried away. And I end up with more ink on the front than what I wanted. Do a little bit of that corner thing. Not a whole lot though. Kind of pink it up a little bit. Alright. Now let's see what we ended up with. I think that's going to be pretty. I'm not really anticipating putting too much, if anything, along our on our cover because it's very pretty the way it is. I do have the um, the lace. Let me think about that for a second. If I wanted to move my example. Oh, and there's a lot of ephemera, and I cut some out. And um, the little sayings, I made them 50% uh, size because I'm using a smaller book. So there's Santas and sleighs and all kinds of stuff in there. All right. So let's look at what we've got from Lisa. This is pretty. wonder if we put this along the edge... It's a little big, isn't it, for putting the holes in? I'm not sure we want white. There's white in it. This is pretty. Mm. Let's see. Let's take a look and see what we've got in here. There's quite a bit of different ones in here. Um, there's a very, very pretty flower. So this is what you have to do. You have to go through and kind of look and see what you've got. Um, this is very pretty. It would almost look kind of pretty there to fill in. No, I'm vetoing that. This is going to be too wide. Oh, this is pretty. How much do I have? Do I have enough? Oh, I do. It's very Christmassy. Oh, it would go right. The middle one would be right where we put the ring. Guess that's not gonna work. Okay. All right. I'm going to continue to go through this. I'm gonna put you on hold. Now I've got some um, some lace. We've got some buttons. This one might work. Got some bangles. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I might, I might take my spray, because that's a really good size. Oh, this has this has glittery in it. I don't know if you can tell. This is very, very pretty. But it's too wide. I think this is... Okay. But I do like this. Put it along here, right there, like that. But I think... I think I want it to be tan. So I'm going to take my alcohol ink and I'm going to spray it. And the spray that I'm going to use with it is going to be Crash Bang. 
I put this new little thing like what you use in the kitchen with the you know the to hold your dishes up okay this is my brown which looks dark but it doesn't spray as dark but look it's got gold paint in it which makes it sparkly so I think I'm going to spray some of this and make it tan with little gold sparkles in it so I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to put you on hold and do that and when we come back we'll glue the two papers on or the two pages on okay what I've decided to do is let that lace dry and we'll put this on And it won't take, you know, 30 minutes to do each page, but I had to explain what we're doing. And then, you know, I'll go over a little bit what our um, process is going to be, what we're going to be making. Okay, so now we want to go along this line and we want to leave a little bit at the top and the bottom and we want that to be even okay so let's go in just a little bit just enough to give ourselves a little bit of brown same amount around we'll have a larger brown border on this side remember we'll have our three holes with our rings on them on that side so I think that's very pretty and then we'll have our lace down here with the the brown it came out a little bit darker but um, it's gonna match all the brown you know that we already have on here and it's gonna have the gold uh, glossy on there and um, I've got four minutes left so I don't think we have enough time to do anything you can go ahead and paper the back if you want um, this paper ended up being five and three-eighths by what the height that it is when you trim it which is eight eight and an eighth yeah eight and an eighth okay so five and three-eighths by eight and an eighth is going to be what it is but I think I'm gonna uh, measure it and cut it as needed um, we're probably going to use some magnets in this and um, we're also going to oh you know what I can do when we go to make the holes I'm going to use this crocodile now it's got two sizes of holes that you can punch and I'm going to put it on the larger size which is the 3 8 now instead of trying to figure out how far in and making them even there's a setting on here you can slide this piece and it works like a backstop so when I put it in if if I just put it up against this then I will have it the same amount in every time now I will have to measure up and down how far apart I want um, I think I'm going to do uh, the center and then go three inches and three inches okay so that's an easy way to do um, your setting on this um, a lot of people I've never seen them really use this feature and really it's a it's a helps you a lot and it takes a lot of your headache out all right so um, that's going to be it for this video and um, don't forget to uh, visit Kyung's uh, videos hers are great and um, <clears throat> her store which is Wonders by Wink and then Lisa Fisher's um, 
videos and Facebook group and her store which is Paper Lace and Bling and then of course visit me over at Sweet Pea Papers on Facebook and here where you are on YouTube. Okay so I think that's it and I will see you in the next video and that's going to be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay bye bye.